What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now, this Division 2 build video, I know I've been hyping it up throughout the week, and here is the first of the two. These are my raid builds, so keep that in mind. This is not a PvP build. This is a raid build or a PvE build. So, with that being said, I am Kamikaze Von Doom. If you guys enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and mash that notification bell for more content. If you have any concerns, gripes, recommendations, what have you, or if you're just looking for people to do the raid with, hit it up in the comment section below and have a good day. But alright, we're going to start off with specializations here. Uh, reason being is that for this raid build there are only three specializations that I use uh, primarily the demolitionist for the bottom right looks like a rhino it grants all group members 5% damage to targets out of cover and if you're in the raid 90% of your targets are out of cover because they are all bosses drones or NPCs that are rushing you very rare will the uh, NPCs get into cover during the raid so you really don't have to worry about that too much this will also give your other teammates a little more oomph with their builds uh, another one you could use sharpshooter for the headshot damage and the stability so that's a big one and also the gunner uh, primarily for that armor kit uh, it's just too hard to uh, pass up especially in PvE that armor kit is life-saving but survivalists you could use this with the uh, new system from title update 4 so you could throw LMG damage on your survivalist and use it for the Razorback part but I've got my Eagle Bear build that I'll show you guys later today that I actually use just for Razorback and this build this LMG build I use for Boomer Weasel and Buddy and Lucy all right, so with all of that out of the way, let's actually look at this build. This is a 499 gear score build. This is my M60 build, and let's go ahead and fast forward to what you guys want to see. Offensive tab, I have 52.5% weapon damage, 40% LMG damage, and 91% damage to elites. So, if that's all you guys came here to see, there you go. But for the rest of you that want to see how I did it, let's go ahead and get into this. M60. Gear score 500. Base damage 35.6k. The talents I'm running, Unhinged, Allegro, and Protected Deploy. I would uh, opt into replacing the de de uh, Protected Deploy with, you know, Stop, Drop, and Roll, In Rhythm, you know, there, there's a lot of other things I'd rather have than protected deploy. But you all know how RNG is. So, getting into the actual mods. I have damage to elites on the scope with the C79. I have 35 extra rounds in my magazine due to the large pouch. I actually have 7% crit hit chance on my laser pointer because I am running demolitionist. And for my muzzle break, again, damage to elites. So just on the weapon alone, I have 10% damage to elites. So if you see that your DTE might be lacking a little bit here or there, just double check your weapon mods. Looking at the secondary, I'm running the Nemesis. Uh, fully maxed out at gear score 500. Right now I'm at 381.5k base damage which isn't bad it's not max but it will be with title update 5 now the reason why I am using this nemesis is for preparation now preparation is the holstered talent for the nemesis this grants 25 percent headshot damage to your current weapon that is scoped in now the way around that is I am running a scope on my M60 so when it says scoped in, that means you need to have a scope on your optic and you just need to ADS or just hold down the left trigger if you're on 
uh, console or whatever it is if you're on PC. But you don't have to actually scope in and zoom in. All you need to do is aim because you already have the scope. So it already tells the nemesis that you have a scope, you're aiming with it, so give me that extra headshot damage. Works like a charm. Uh, for those of you that are a little confused on that, if you look right here, I have a hollow sight. It does not say scope, and you need something that says scope on it. Uh, more specifically, you need to do that secret mission to get this C79 scope, because this scope is money. All right, and the sidearm, I'm running the double barrel sawed off, uh, 195K base. It's okay. I, I use it whenever I get in sticky situations. It does too much damage to ignore. Now that is your weapons. So M60, Nemesis, and the sawed off shotgun. Now before I get into the actual build and gear items, I want you guys to look a little bit to the left. It shows you that I have a 499 gear score for this build. And I am running, which in my eyes is a very, very balanced build. It is 7 into red, 6 into blue, and 5 into blue. With that, I have 233,000 armor and 68,000 health and just over 1,000 skill power. Getting into the actual gear parts, I'll start off with the mask. I am rocking a Wavern Wear mask. 499 gear score. For the recalibration, I'm at 93 out of 100, so it's right near max. And just a quick reminder for the brand set bonuses, I'm running Wyvern Wear for the crit damage and the crit chance. I'm not really using it for the drone skill power, but if you could uh, incorporate your drone into it, it would only make this even stronger. Now, as far as the attributes, I have damage to elites at 41% and I have modified the skill power to go up to 359. The talent I am rocking on this mask is hard hitting. Gives you that extra damage to elites. Going over to the backpack, again Waver and Wear. Uh, the attributes on the backpack, weapon damage at 9%, skill power at 149, and crit chance at 5%. I also have hard hitting and self adjusting on the backpack. The only thing I would change at all is uh, probably switch out self adjusting for either uh, hardened. I would really say hardened. Not so much vital. I mean vital's cool but you really want to focus more into your armor and just keeping your armor during the raid. Because no matter what happens during the raid, if you lose your armor, you're pretty much a one-shot uh, after that. So try try to get more armor if you can. If not, this build just does just fine. I really have no problems with this build. Now as far as the mods for the backpack, it has one mod slot for the utility mod. And I have chosen skill power and burn damage for this mod. Let's go down to the gloves. Murakami gloves. Um, you can already see from the talent, I have Devastating. The Murakami brand set bonus. I only have one out of the three active, and it's for the 8% health, so you really want that. Also, for the attribute, I have health and 11% damage uh, for the LMG. So you can go up to 12, but remember, when you're getting your gloves, if it has a lower roll damage on it, you might not be able to max it out at that 12%. For example, right now on these gloves, I cannot make them better due to the RNG. So I did recalibrate them to the full 100 out of 100, giving me that 11% LMG damage. Going to the vest, Petrov vest. Uh, remember Petrov, the brand set gives you a, a LMG damage for this build. The attributes, I have skill power, weapon damage, which I got up to 12% so far. 
armor and health. The armor and health rolls are relatively low on here, but as you can see, the main concern I had with this build is damage and damage to elites. So I do have the hard hitting for the damage to elites, and then I also spec more into the weapon damage so that I get that raw damage to go with it. The one mod slot I have is a utility mod slot. The mod I used is a skill power grenade damage mod. It also has XP weak point kills, but you know, whatever. Really did that for the grenade damage, um, really for the uh, Buddy and Lucy. Going down to the holster. Uh, holster is Waver and Wear again, so this is the third one giving you that crit hit chance under the brand set bonuses. And then also I have the attribute more crit hit chance. Uh, it's only at 14.5% crit hit chance right now, but I'm pretty sure it can go up to 15.5, maybe 16. So I'm only at 16 out of 100 for the recalibration. So I'm positive I'll be able to get that crit hit chance up just a little bit more. And also devastating on the holster. Now the one mod I do have for the holster is a offensive systems mod. This one has weapon damage, LMG damage, and damage to health. So overall just from this one mod I'm getting 5.5% damage and then that 1% extra damage to health. And finally going to the knee pads. Gilligard knee pads. Uh, I opted for the hard hitting. Um, you, you can go with patience if you want, but this build is just a nail driver and I wanted to match my weapon damage and my damage to elites to try to keep that balance and you know, and it's really working for me. If you guys need patience and your sustainability just isn't there, then by all means put patience on. But for me right now I've got hard hitting. Now the brand set for Gilligard, I only have the first one unlocked, so I'm getting that extra 5% total armor. And under the attribute I have 22,000 health. And then also that hard hitting for the damage to elites. Going to the mods, it is Gilligard knee pads, so you do get two mod slots. Both of them are defensive system mods, so I do have the armor, health regen, and total armor on one, and then armor, total armor, and health regen, or armor regen on the other. Both great mods. Alright, so there are your gear items. So quick overview, I have three Wavern Wear, giving me the crit damage and crit chance. I have Devastating on the holster and the gloves. I have Hard Hitting on the knee pads, chest piece, mask, and backpack. And then I am getting the LMG damage from the Petrov, health from the Murakami, and armor from the Gilligard. Woo! All right. Now for the skills, I usually don't go over this, but for this one I will. I use this build for the raid. This is my raid build. I use this for Boomer, Weasel, and Buddy and Lucy. I switch over to my AR and my Survivalist for Razorback, but this is the build that I use for the other 75% of the raid. So these skills that I use are, eh, one is mandatory, the other one's not really. So the first one I use is the Revive Hive. If you are doing anything at a high difficulty, whether it be a heroic mission, whether it be a heroic you know, stronghold or anything invaded and heroic, you might want to have a Revive Hive. Because the Revive Hive can pick you up without anyone being around you, and you can also throw it across the map to your teammate and pick them up that way as well. So this actually helps you and your team. So in the raid, if everyone is running a revive hive, you really don't have to worry about getting those pickups. Because, you know, everyone will go down every once in a while. We all know it. So you might as well have a revive hive to help you out with that. 
Now for the second skill, I I have a assault uh, turret on right now. This is purely to uh, distract NPCs in one fashion or another. So during Boomer, you do have ads that spawn everywhere, eh, mainly between 44 and 40, but they do spawn pretty much everywhere. So you want that turret, that turret could help distract them. You can go with the Kim Launcher heal by all means, but if you're running like Gunner, you get your armor and 50% of it back instantly. So, you know, using the Kim Launcher, yeah, it does help, but if you're doing like speed runs in the raid and crap like that, you're really not too worried about a little chem launcher heal. You're more worried about either having a deflector drone maybe for ad control. Maybe you want to do like a jammer pulse for like drones and what have you. Or maybe you just want to use the uh, secret mine or turret and just, you know, get people off your back. But that is my little spiel about the skills. Now grenades. I know you guys heard me say something about grenades earlier for Buddy and Lucy. Now Buddy does squat down uh, and he shoots out those mines, seeker mines that come out and screw everyone over. Basically if you have a frag or a concussion grenade while uh, Buddy is squatting you can spam one or two grenades on Buddy's body and it will destroy all of those seekers instantly. It helps out the entire team and you just can't really go wrong with it. Oh, and by the way, you need a frag or a concussion grenade for Razorback if you're doing the generators. All right, I think this video has gone on long enough, so let me just wrap up with the stat sheet and I'll get you guys out of here. So starting off with the weapons, I am sitting at 35,645 weapon damage. 36.5 crit chance, 32 crit damage, and 65 headshot damage. Going down to the offensive tab, my weapon handling is in the negative due to the unhinged, so that's why I was saying earlier you can use the sharpshooter for that stability and extra headshot damage if you want to. It is a great tool to have. Um, but for me, I prefer the demolitionist for the damage to targets out of cover. But we're not here for the weapon handling, are we? We are here for that damage bonus. 52.5% weapon damage bonus and 40% LMG bonus. I, this is not maxed out. You can get it higher. I will try to make it a goal for me to get a 100% damage bonus build coming. But for now, this 92.5, it really does the, the job for me. And then also, I do have the 91% damage to elites. So when you add those up together, you do have 183% damage bonus to elites. Ooh, that's a lot. Right. So in the defense tab, I do have armor at 233, max health 68, health regen 36, burn resistance 20. Skill power across the board, 1080, except for the drone and the hive, but we really don't really care about that. All right, you guys, that is it. That is the first of the two raid builds. So this build I use for the first three bosses of the raid, and then I will show you guys my AR build later today. So if you have not seen that and you have seen this video, I probably have already posted the Eagle Bear build, but if not, it will be out later today. So like always, you guys, Kamikaze Von Doom here. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. If you have anything to say at all, hit me up in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.